on World News Tonight. A second chance. Social media giant Meta announced that the former US president will regain his social media handles. Freezing over. Sub-zero temperatures reported all over Asia as a cold snap set in. A morbid revelation. A shocking discovery unveiled by scientists on the Earth's core. What dangers will it pose? Chanel's haute couture. The French fashion house flaunts their new collection in Paris. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for being with us on World News as we cover the latest stories from around the globe. Our broadcast tonight leads with neighbouring India, a nation celebrating its 74th Republic Day today with a colourful parade displaying military might and cultural diversity. The public holiday marks the anniversary of India officially adopting its constitution, making it a sovereign republic. The highlight of the Republic Day in India is a parade which is held in capital city Delhi and telecast live across the country. Every year, the country also invites a foreign dignitary as the chief guest to the parade. This year, Egypt's president, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, is the guest of honour. Hundreds of people have braved the January chill to watch the parade, which passes through the newly renovated Kartavya Path, formerly Rajpath. Soldiers from India's military regiments marched as India's president, prime minister and other guests watched on. Some regiments come astride camels and horses, which was also decked in colourful finery, accompanied by the sound of drums and bagpipes. The spectacle then makes way for elaborate floats or tableaux representing different Indian states. These are usually based on cultural or historical milestones the states want to highlight. The move is celebratory as the performers dance and wave their way through the crowds. Several government departments also have their own tableau showcasing India's achievements in the fields of agriculture, science and technology. Over the years, the procession became longer and more colourful, and it's a matter of pride for Indian states and military regiments to be chosen to participate in it. Still in India, Adani Group said that it is evaluating taking remedial and punitive action under US and Indian laws against short-seller Hindenburg Research, which in report accused the conglomerate or improper use of offshore tax havens. Adani Group's legal head, Jatin Jalundwala, said in a statement that the maliciously mischievous, unresearched report published by Hindenburg Research on the 24th of January 2023 has adversely affected the Adani Group, their shareholders and also investors. The report by Hindenburg, which said it held short positions in the conglomerate, led to seven listed group companies of Adani losing $10.73 billion in market capitalization on Wednesday. The group, which is led by Gautam Adani, the world's third richest person, according to Forbes, dismissed the U.S. short seller's claims on Wednesday as baseless, saying it was timed to damage its reputation ahead of a large share offering. Hindenburg did not respond immediately to a request for comment outside regular U.S. business hours. Adani's secondary share sales saw participation from Maybank Securities and Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, among others. Google has announced a series of changes to its Android system in India after the search giant lost a major antitrust case in the country. This includes allowing users to choose their default search engine on Android. The move comes after India's Supreme Court upheld a ruling by the country's antitrust watchdog that said the company had abused its market position. The Competition Commission of India fined the company 161 million US dollars, accusing it of unfair business practices. About 97% of smartphones in India are estimated to be run on Android. Antitrust proceedings against the tech giant started in October when CCI asked Google to make several changes to its Android ecosystem. The watchdog said Google was abusing the licensing of its Android operating system for a range of smartphones, web searches, browsing and video hosting services. It accused Google of entering into one-sided agreements with smartphone makers to ensure the dominance of its apps. CCI said this was stifling competition and gave Google continuous access to consumer data and lucrative advertising opportunities. It ordered the company to stop such practices. Google had challenged CCI's directives in the Supreme Court, saying no other jurisdiction has ever asked for such far-reaching changes. It argued that the changes directed by CCI would force the company to alter arrangements with more than 1,100 device manufacturers and thousands of app developers. But the court refused to block the CCI directives and said that a lower court, where Google had first challenged the order, could continue hearing the appeal, but should give a ruling before the end of March. Google is facing a series of antitrust cases in India, and authorities are also probing its conduct in the smart TV market. 
The United States is following Germany's lead in donating dozens of Leopard 2 and Abrams battle tanks to Ukraine. And this is being heralded as a game changer by Kyiv. But the logistics of moving the fleets of heavy armor and how they will be used are unclear. In what Kyiv hopes will be a turning point after nearly a year of war, the U.S. changed course on Wednesday and announced it would send 31 of its most advanced battle tanks to Ukraine, helping to break a global stalemate on the weapons that Ukraine says are desperately needed to fight off Russian forces and potentially reclaim occupied territory in the east and south. President Joe Biden made the announcement at the White House, joined by Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. Armored capability, as uh, General Austin will tell you, has been critical. And that's why the United States has committed hundreds of armored fighting vehicles to date, including more than 500 as part of the assistance package we announced last Friday. And today, today I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine. The announcement comes after Germany on Wednesday broke a taboo with a similar decision to send its Leopard 2 tanks. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Denn es ist wirklich Krieg in Europa. There really is a war going on in Europe, not far away from here, Berlin. It is happening in a large country, Ukraine. That's why we always have to make very clear with everything we do that we do what is necessary and possible to support Ukraine, but that at the same time we avoid an escalation between Russia and NATO. We will continue to always stick to that principle. The U.S. decision to deliver M1 Abrams tanks helped resolve a diplomatic logjam with Germany, which was hesitant to send the advanced weaponry amid deep reluctance given its Nazi past. Angela Stent, Georgetown University professor emerita and author of Putin's World, Russia Against the West and the Rest, says it's a long-held caution in the country. You do have a number of German officials and experts, commentators saying we can't have German tanks, you know, on the border with Russia again. This evokes terrible, terrible memories of World War II. But the counter argument to this is um, because you hear a lot about Russia is if you, if you look at how Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union, it invaded it through Ukraine and Belarus. So Germany also has a historic responsibility towards Ukrainians for what happened in World War II. There was also hesitation in Washington, where officials were wary of the idea of deploying the Abrams, a highly sophisticated and expensive weapon, which is difficult to maintain, requires extensive training, and provides a logistical resupply challenge because it runs on jet fuel. But U.S. officials eventually consented once they determined it was necessary in order to persuade Germany to send its more easily operated Leopard 2 tanks, the workhorse of NATO armies across Europe. Kyiv has been calling for months for Western battle tanks that would give its forces greater firepower and protection, hoping to break through long static front lines. Russia has condemned Berlin's decision to provide Leopard 2 tanks as a dangerous provocation. But on Wednesday, Biden said the move wouldn't escalate the war, saying the new weapons are not an offensive threat to Russia. He also thanked Germany for its decision, saying the country had really stepped up. Putin expected Europe and the United States to weaken our resolve. He expected our support for Ukraine to crumble with time. He was wrong. Donald Trump has been given a second chance as he will be allowed back on Facebook and Instagram. After Meta announced it would be ending its two-year suspension of his accounts, the social media giant said the suspension will end in the coming weeks. Facebook parent Meta says it's reinstating the accounts of US President Donald Trump on the platform as well as Instagram in the coming weeks. He was kicked off the platforms for two years after what the company called praise for people engaged in violence at the US Capitol building on January 6, 2021. In a Wednesday blog post, Meta claimed new guardrails were added to deter repeat offenses. Its president of global affairs, Nick Clegg, said Trump will face heightened penalties in light of his violations. If he breaks Meta's community standards again, it could result in a new suspension ranging from one month to two years, depending on the severity. The restoration of Trump's accounts comes after he announced he would run for president in 2024. 
with 34 million followers on Facebook and 23 million on Instagram, the platforms could provide a boost for Trump in terms of political outreach and fundraising, but it isn't clear whether or how the former president intends to rejoin them. He's preferred to use his own platform, Truth Social, to reach out to followers. Since Trump regained his Twitter account, he hasn't sent out any new tweets on what was once his social media of choice. In days and weeks following the Capitol Hill violence, Twitter, Meta and YouTube made unprecedented moves blocking Trump's accounts as they decided such moves outweighed the risk of potential further incitement to violence. Meta's blog post also suggested it may reactivate other suspended accounts, including those sanctioned for their role in the January 6th unrest. Meta's decision on Trump's accounts drew sharp rebuke from civil rights advocates. NAACP President Derek Johnson called it quite astonishing and that it does nothing to restore any sense of trust among those fleeing the social media giant that he claimed is losing popularity. We're going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Stay with us. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, Malaysia's Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim met Brunei's ruler Sultan Hassan al Bolkaya during his first visit to the Sultanate on Borneo Island since being elected last year. The Malaysian Prime Minister mentioned Anwar and the Sultan discussed border developments and investments between the two Southeast Asian neighbours. The two leaders also witnessed the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the country's state investment agencies. Anwar was appointed Malaysia's 10th Prime Minister after a closely fought election in November last year. Starting off first in the European region, now in the Asian region, a deadly cold snap that is gripping East Asia has killed at least four people in Japan after sub-zero temperatures and heavy snow brought travel chaos during the Lunar New Year holiday, with climate experts warning that such extreme weather events had become the new norm. An unusually cold weather front and extreme low pressure swept across Asia this week. Heavy snow blanketed swathes of Japan on Wednesday. One person died as a result of the storm there. Snowfall and fierce winds forced hundreds of flight cancellations and disrupted train travel. The Coast Guard said two people died and nine were missing after a cargo ship sank off southwestern Japan early on Wednesday amid fierce winter winds. This was the lifeboat from the sunken ship being recovered as the search for survivors continued. At least 124 people died in freezing temperatures in Afghanistan earlier this week, according to media reports. The weather is too cold. We are experiencing extreme coldness. People are facing many problems. There is no water, no gas. People are trying to cope with these challenges. In China, state broadcaster CCTV showed footage of a frozen bicycle, while railway workers in the eastern Yantai city worked to clear heavy snow from the tracks. Temperatures in Mohei, China's northernmost city, dropped to a record minus 53 degrees Celsius, that's minus 63 degrees Fahrenheit, on Sunday. Heavy snow and strong winds have also hit southern regions of South Korea. In Japan, domestic airlines cancelled 450 flights, while 490 highway areas were blocked and 57 railway services suspended nationwide, the Transport Ministry said. The bitter weather is expected to continue through Thursday. With many in California reeling from the terrific shooting incident, a farm worker has been formally charged with murder for a deadly shooting in California that left seven dead. An immigrant farm worker accused of shooting and killing seven of his co-workers this week was formally charged with premeditated murder on Wednesday. Shanli Zhao stood behind glass, handcuffed and in a red jumpsuit, as he was formally presented with the charges during his first court appearance in Redwood City. The 66-year-old did not enter a plea and was ordered held without bond. Zhao is a lone suspect in Monday's massacre at two mushroom farms in the seaside town of Half Moon Bay. It was the state's second deadly gun rampage in as many days, with the incidents claiming a combined total of 18 lives. Outside the courthouse, San Mateo County District Attorney Steve Wagstaff said Zhao posed a flight risk. 
This is the highest number of charges of seven counts of murder we have not had in San Mateo County before. A case with one instance of seven murders at once. He is not a, a citizen of this country. There's plenty of motive to run. For that reason, it was to me a very straightforward and simple request for no bail. The prosecutor said Zhao was a Chinese citizen who has resided in the U.S. for at least 10 years. The precise motive of the attack is still unknown. But Wagstaff said it was not inspired by the attack that happened in Monterey Park two days earlier. The question was whether this is any evidence of copycat of Monterey Park, and uh, we believe uh, the answer is no to that. Not just simply we're not sure. We believe the answer is no. Authorities said early evidence indicated the bloodshed stemmed from a workplace grievance. Zhao had been employed by one of the growers, Mountain Mushroom Farm, and had resided at the property, along with some of his co-workers. The second crime scene, Concord Farms, is about a mile away. The next court proceeding in the case was set for February the 16th. Latest research has shown a new research has suggested that the rotation of Earth's inner core may have paused and it could even go into reverse rotation. But many experts suggest that this is not a cause of concern as this revelation is still in the research stage. The Earth is formed of the crust, the mantle and the inner and outer cores. The solid inner core is situated about 3,200 miles below the Earth's crust and is separated from the semi-solid mantle by the liquid outer core, which allows the inner core to rotate at a different speed from the rotation of the Earth itself. With a radius of almost 2,200 miles, Earth's core is about the size of Mars. It consists mostly of iron and nickel and contains about one-third of Earth's mass. In research published in the journal Nature Geoscience on Monday, Yi Yang, associate research scientist at Peking University and Xiao Dong Song, Peking University chair professor, studied seismic waves from earthquakes that have passed through the Earth's inner core along similar paths since the 1960s to infer how fast the inner core is spinning. What they found was unexpected. Since 2009, seismic records, which previously changed over time, showed little difference. This, they said, suggested that the inner core rotation had paused. The spin of the inner core is driven by the magnetic field generated in the outer core and balanced by the gravitational effects of the mantle. Knowing how the inner core rotates could shed light on how these layers interact and other processes deep in the Earth. Song and Yang argue that, based on their calculations, a small imbalance in the electromagnetic and gravitational forces could slow and even reverse the inner core's rotation. They believe this is part of a seven-decade cycle and that the turning point prior to the one they detected in their data around 2009 and 2010 occurred in the early 1970s. Well, it's not the Oscars if not a little bit of drama is involved. Till director Shinonia Shukpu accused the Oscars, as well as the entertainment industry, of being aggressively committed to upholding whiteness after she failed to earn a Best Director nomination. The 2023 Oscar nominees of the 95th Academy Awards were announced with the annual surprises and snubs that come from the movies that are recognized. One snub included Till, a biographical drama about Mammy, Till Bradley and her search for her justice after a murder of a 14-year-old son, Emmett Till. Although the movie received critical acclaim, it failed to receive any nominations in any category. Because of this, Chukpu said the Academy Awards are upholding whiteness and perpetuating misogyny against black women. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Tesla beat Wall Street targets for fourth quarter revenue and profit despite a sharp decline in vehicle profit margins as it sought to reassure investors that it can cut costs and continue to generate cash as competition intensifies in the year ahead. Thousands of Australians gathered in state capitals on beaches and across Sydney Harbour to celebrate Australia's National Day, while others railed in support of Indigenous people. Japanese police are on hunt for a person who set a bomb and death threat to hundreds of schools, prompting hasty closures. The threats were faxed to high schools and universities earlier this week from a Tokyo registered number. Taliban ministers have told a senior UN official that they have planned to draw up new guidelines to allow Afghan women to work in some humanitarian operations. Pope Francis criticized laws that criminalize homosexuals as unjust and called on Catholic bishops who support the laws to welcome LGBTQ people into the church.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other there in English. Now, now we leave you tonight with visuals of the French fashion house Chanel Spring Haute Couture Show, sending models one at a time, circling and towering statues like ringmasters in bouncy cheerleader miniskirts floral jumpsuits and shimmery tweed jackets. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.